So something that's very interesting about Cosmos DB API is that it's kind of like an umbrella service for a bunch of different types of databases. Um, and this is a lot of, uh, this can be confusing for someone that's coming from AWS or GCP where like AWS has DynamoDB and all it is is a document database where um, Cosmos DB it like supports a variety of different kinds. Um, and so when you first create your Cosmos DB database, you have to choose an API. Um, and so we'll just walk through the different types of APIs here and just give you some information around them. So the first one, and this is the default one, is Core SQL API. So it is a document database, but it's interesting because it allows you to use an SQL or SQL-like uh, language. And so um, this is quite popular because uh, one of the challenges of using a document database is that normally you don't get to use SQL. Uh, but with Cosmos DB, uh, you do, and so that is something that's really nice. Then you have Azure Table API. This can be a bit confusing because when Cosmos DB, uh, before it came out, there was just Azure Table. Um, and so Azure Table uh, basically is just a key value store, and you access that through Azure Table storages, um, like through storage accounts. But uh, then they decided to make Azure Table to be more of a document database and to make it highly uh, res uh, res uh, resilient and highly available and highly redundant. And so basically Core SQL API is like the version two of Azure Table API, but this one still exists because it's very cost effective. So if you don't need a lot of redundancy and you just need a key value store, you need something very inexpensive, you can use Azure Table API, but even though you don't really access it through Cosmos DB, it still is part of the Cosmos DB product because it was the first uh, iteration or version of it. You have MongoDB API. And so um, this is, uh, a, 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 it's not MongoDB, I don't think underneath, but it's uh, it's compatible with uh, MongoDB. So the idea is that if you need MongoDB, this is where you're gonna spin that up. Same thing with Cassandra. If you need Cassandra, you would spin that up as well. Uh, and this is gonna use the Cassandra queried language. Um, and so that is something that is there. Uh, then you have Gremlin API, so this would allow you to use a graph database. But you can see these are really, really different things, and it is a bit confusing, but uh, that's just how Azure likes to organize their services. So hopefully that clears that up for you, okay? 